we can record this. Okay, so today we're going to continue our conversation on taking 100% responsibility with author John G. Miller. We're going to talk about raising accountable kids, flipping the switch, QBQ, which is the most important and outstanding, and the workbook. So many things we're going to talk about today. So fasten your seatbelt because we're going to learn and grow together. And hopefully, we'll be on Facebook. Let's see. Uh, let me know when we are on. Here we go. Let me see if I have something that's stopping it. Time to dance. I'm a little distracted this morning because this. Okay. Let me try something new. Right here, and when you need a friend, you can count on me. I'll be right here. Right here, waiting for you. This is Lady Howard, her new book, The Lillian Herman Show. Visit her on the web at wendyandfriend.com. Now, let's all learn together. Here's Lillian McDermott. Hello, my listening friend. It's so nice we can meet each other on the air on this beautiful best day ever. And for those of you who are new to the Lillian McDermott radio show, just know that I have been waiting for you. It is my commitment to provide alternative ways, and it's my mission to make awareness, responsibility, and truth to everyone, and I'm, I'm just like a little distracted because I'm trying to get on to Facebook Live, and I'm just going to try that again because I am the only one that's responsible for me. And so um, I am doing this right now, and it's telling me that it's going to Facebook Live, but it's going to happen again. It's doing it again where it is going to my personal page, and we're not going to do that today because we are going to take 100% ownership for our live. And so with that in mind, I'm just going to focus on the show right now because things can get in our way and become very distracting. It could be that way as we're raising children. It could be that way in every aspect, whether it's our career. And so if you have listened to the show for even a day, because we've been airing the show for over seven and a half years, but if even for a day, you'll know that the word 100, the words 100% responsibility are key to our, this show. It is where, this is like a classroom where we take 100% ownership for our life. And so today, I, well, not today, when I was doing a show on 100% responsibility and taking ownership for our life, someone posted on my YouTube QBQ. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, well, what is that? And so that prompted to dive into QBQ and out comes this beautiful man named John G. Miller, who has been saying the same things that I've been saying way ahead of me. And so we're all in this together. What happens to you happens to me. And whatever, whatever, whenever a person stands in front of you, they have an incredible message that we get to either accept and embrace or reject. It is up to you. The delivery and the, the messenger is what, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. So if you're not ready for this message, perhaps you should consider why. And so John G. Miller has written many books. Um, and today we're going to be focusing on, and we're going to be weaving the QBQ, which is the question behind the question. But we want to talk about raising accountable kids. But in order to raise accountable kids, we must have the foundation, which is the QBQ. And so since it is our sole purpose in life to give and receive love and knowledge, I am grateful to John G. Miller because he is here to do just that. Welcome, John, to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show. Thank you, Lillian. Glad to be here. Yeah, share a little bit about your background and what led you to 100% responsibility and accountability. Well, I'm still working on that in my own life, but yes. uh, it is what we teach at QBQ, our company here based in Denver, Colorado. Yes. And when I say the company, it's basically uh, my daughter and me. Uh, we know we have seven kids and our 36-year-old daughter goes all over the country now teaching QBQ. And the way it happened was back in uh, about 1986 when I was 28, because I'm old. No. I left the corporate world 
to go out and sell leadership and management and sales training in Minneapolis, St. Paul. And over the next 10 years, I really found my niche. I loved selling. I loved training. I loved facilitating conversation. And over 10 years, I, I think I sat in 10,000 hours of workshops with good people, managers at all level, at all levels, executives, frontline supervisors. And I basically began to hear language from people that said, you know what, we could do better. We could practice more personal accountability. Yes. And so after those 10 years, I left that training company that I had been signed on with for a decade and I went off to do my own thing. And that was 1995. And here we are all these years later. And the only thing we do is we teach personal accountability, which is a whole heck of a lot like your 100% responsibility. That no, is, no excuses. That's right. No excuses. But in order to know where, and I, tell, I used to tell my children this all the time, in order for you to know where you're going, you, you must have a position. You must know where you're going in order, because any if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. Right. And I think that that's being missed today in society. In society today, it's all whatever, willy-nilly. And I'm not trying to be judgmental in this. Right. It's, this is my observation, is that in order for me to create what I want, I must be intentional. Mm -hmm. but, but we're relying on other people. Often, yes. So, now, yeah, go ahead. Not, nothing wrong with having people in our life to support and help us. But in the end, we have found outstanding individuals tend to say, okay, I own it. I did it. My bad. It's my job to fix it. What can I do from here to move forward in life? And as we teach in QBQ, outstanding people tend to really work hard to avoid victim thinking. Uh, and victim thinking has all kinds of synonyms, whining, entitlement, complaining, bemoaning, pity party, whatever you want to call it. It really is all about me saying, why isn't the world treating me better? Why are people unfair to me? Why don't I have what others have? Instead of asking, what can I do today to grow, learn, and change? How can I move forward? What can I do to contribute to this world? Those, yes. those are what we call, and we'll let this unfold as, at your pacing, but those are what we call QBQs. And we're going to continue our conversation uh, when you need a friend.com and at on facebook.com at Lillian's radio show when we return worldwide at when you need a friend.com. We'll be right here waiting for you. I finally got Facebook Live going. So if you want to, you can share it with your, um, with your group. And All so right. for those of you, I am so sorry. We've been trying to get on Facebook Live and I think we are on now. So John, if you want to check and Andre, can you verify that? And um, so excited to have everybody on Facebook Live join us because this is your classroom as well. It's our classroom where we get to learn. And you know, responsibility, John, and I've said this over and over again, has such a bum rap. We think of responsibility as blame, shame, fault, and duty. And this is something that I'm trying to reframe on the show, that ownership and saying, okay, this is how I created it. And yep. it, it does not include blame, shame, fault, or duty, but immediately we go into that shame. Why do you think that we, there are certain words we embrace and then there are certain words that we give the negative connotation to? One thing I do know is we've been out speaking on personal accountability for almost a quarter of a century mm -hmm. is sometimes initially a client might think, oh, well, we, we don't want our people to think we're beating them up. Yeah. And that's one of the common views of accountability. You need to be more responsible. And that is not our message. Our message is an inside out approach to living life. QBQ changes me from the inside out so I can be a better father, a better husband. I mean, I've only, I've only been married 39 years. We're still learning <laughs> this stuff, you know? That's right. A better grandfather now, a better professional. So a lot of people do think initially accountability, ooh, that's dripping with negative connotation. No, there's nothing more exciting than saying, I own my life. My choices direct me to my destination, my decisions get me where I'm going, I will not blame, whine, complain, or point fingers. That's fun. Yeah. I came up with a new acronym, um, you know, you know, the, that, you know, the, 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 the what was the acronym that you used um, just earlier? I'm, I'm trying to, to get my bearings straight now that we're on Facebook Live and, 
And for those, uh, and the question yeah. behind the question. Yeah, the question. No, you had said something that triggered something, but I, I'm glad that we we're on Facebook Live. Share where you're from, where you're listening from. If you're getting ready in the morning and you're listening from, you know, Australia or India, or if you're, we're going to be giving a book away. And if you're in the nation, we will send it to you. But if you're not, then you pay for postage. How about that? Is that good? All Welcome right. back to the Lillian McDermott radio show where we always learn and grow together. Today's teacher is John G. Miller. And what I want to talk about today is raising accountable kids. I love that topic. However, in order for us to get to this place, we must know the QBQ. Mm -hmm. We must know the, so we're giving away. And when I say we, John is giving away many books today. So you get to pick the book you want. So we have the QBQ, which is the question behind the question, mm -hmm. then flipping the switch. And there is outstanding, which John has on his hand. I, I can show that right that's, here. That's, that's my copy over there is outstanding. <laughs> yeah, and, I'm holding then, it. and then we have the Raising Accountable Kids and the QBQ workbook. So we have uh, for those of you, you can call 407-373-5959. And so we're going to do it in fives today because it's going to be a little complicated. And so just send it to me we'll, and send me your, your texts, your calls. I do not answer the phone. If you're watching on Facebook Live at Lillian's Radio Show, send me a private message and tell me which book resonates with you. So before we start talking about raising accountable kids, how do we, John, become accountable parents sure, sure. and employees and uh, husbands and wives and partners? Go ahead. Well, what's exciting about QBQ and what we teach is, uh, you know, being responsible is not a new message and uh, looking in the mirror, the man in the mirror, the woman in the mirror, you know, that's not new. It's all good. It's all worthy. Mm -hmm. What's exciting about QBQ is it actually shows us how to eliminate three traps. And we've pretty much figured out through our work with corporations that there are three traps people fall into. The first one is victim thinking, as we alluded to earlier. And that really sounds like, why is this happening to me? Why don't I ever get a break? Why, why doesn't me? that department? Yeah, yeah, why me? Why doesn't that department do its job right? Why don't I get paid more? Why don't they give us greater benefits? Whatever, it's just a poor me kind of thing. Mm -hmm. The second trap is blame or finger pointing. And that really comes from who done it questions. Who dropped the ball? Who missed the deadline? Who made the mistake? Who hired these people? <laughs> oh, wait, I did. And then, <laughs> excuse me, the third trap is procrastination. And that in a corporate environment or a team environment or even in a family looks like this. When will somebody else handle this problem? Yeah. When will they take care of this? When will someone improve this place? And as we say in the outstanding book, that book is dedicated to those who are willing to work to improve the place. So there's a theme of accountability through everything we teach, and it works to get rid of victim thinking, blaming, and procrastination. That's how we begin the journey of living an accountable life. Well, uh, let's set the stage because you, you share a story that is so powerful that I would have loved to have been there to watch this interaction when you were sitting at a restaurant and a mm -hmm. young man came and became your server. So would you yes. like to share that? And this is what we're talking about outstanding. Well, absolutely. I was sitting at the Rock Bottom Brewery restaurant in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It was a busy, busy Thursday. They put me at the bar because there were no you know, booths or tables available. And after a few minutes, a young man runs by me carrying a very heavy load of dirty dishes, you know, going to the, going to the kitchen with a, a tray. But he took the time to do a couple things. He noticed me. He observed me. He turned to me. He said to me, sir, have you been helped? And I said, no, and I'm kind of in a hurry. He said, I can help you. What would you like? I said, oh, just a big salad and maybe a roll. Great. What can I get you to drink? And I, I, I proudly said, well, I'll have a Diet Coke. It's my favorite. <laughs> and uh, he said, oh, sorry, we only sell Pepsi products. And I said, no, Pepsi isn't the best choice for me, but I'll have water and lemon. How about that? He goes, that's great. So he's gone. A couple minutes later, he's back with the salad and the roll and the water and the lemon. And this is a key point, Lillian, especially for those of you out there involved in customer service. 
our extra edge in the, in the marketplace comes from individuals going the extra mile. There's a direct connection between the corporations, the organization's extra edge, and, and me, John Miller, choosing to go the extra mile. In other words, this young man did not have to come back. I was already happy. But a couple minutes later, I suddenly felt the wind of enthusiasm behind my back and the long arm of service reaches, reaches over my shoulder past my ear, places right next to my plate a 20-ounce bottle of Diet Coke, just what I'd asked for. And I was so stunned. I remember just, thanks, and he took off. My first thought, Lillian, was hire that guy. <laughs> and I don't care, hope this doesn't offend anybody, I don't care if he went to college because I want to hire character over college degrees. I want to hire accountability over the latest and greatest three letters after someone's name. That's what I want to put on my team. So yeah. I called him over, basically asked him, you know, how did you do this? What happened? You've been awfully busy. And of course, the, the funny part, and this is all chapter one of the QBQ book. Yeah. When I said, how did you have time to go get it? He said, oh, I didn't go get it, sir. I sent my manager. <laughs> <laughs> and believe me, most people would love on some days to send their boss somewhere, if you know what I mean. So yes. he and I had a great conversation. I remember he, he came back with training manuals and stuff they were teaching him. And he was just an excited young man growing and learning and wanting to, to get better. And when I came back a month later, he'd already been promoted to management. That's what practicing personal accountability can do for us. And that's the abbreviated story. The QBQ yeah. chapter one covers it all. Yeah. And that's the thing that we are just like saying to, it's not my job. And so now we've taken this. And so let's talk about the principles of QBQ. Um, how do you become a QBQ follower or embracer or whatever you want to sure. add to that? Well, obviously, just like you, Lillian, we'd love to have people follow us at QBQ.com and on Facebook and Twitter and all those places. But it really begins with, with me, in this case, you, mm -hmm. the, the listener, saying, okay, you know what? I have been whining. I, den I do tend to blame when things don't go my way. I've been feeling sorry for myself. Uh, I've been putting off action, waiting for the conditions and the situation to be perfect. Uh, today, I will choose the accountable path. But John, uh, Lillian, how do I do that? It sounds good. I don't know what to do. Well, as we teach in QBQ and in the parenting book, it begins with really listening to ourselves. What kind of questions have I been asking? As we teach in the material, the answers, Lillian, are always in the questions. So when I ask better questions, I get better answers. But what we always need to clarify for people who are learning this material is if you're a manager, this is not about asking your team better questions. If you're a salesperson, this is not about asking the customer a better question. This is about me asking better questions of me because that's the 100% responsibility as Lillian so eloquently says and teaches. Mm -hmm. So it begins with me identifying the why questions, victim thinking, the when questions, procrastination, the who questions, blame. Begin to identify those negative questions and write them down. And then as you go through the QBQ book, you'll learn how to turn them around and ask what we call the question behind the question, the QBQ. That puts us on the higher level, the higher road called accountability accountability and what can I do to make a difference right and so there's so many different times and now we've taken this I don't want to take it's not my fault it's not my my thing it's not my job it's not my responsibility right. the moment we start thinking like that what do you call that thinking bad stuff bad stuff <laughs> bad stuff happens and you know I've, I've always believed this that nothing good comes from fear. And that was the word, that was the, because to me, fear is an acronym. Sure. Uh, and I use fear as an acronym to shift because there's certain words that we use in our vocabulary that mm -hmm. bring us down. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. fearful thinking, lack-minded thinking, those mm -hmm. are all the things that we can shift and take and say, it stops now and it sure. stops yep. here with me. And I know that you have been teaching this. Can you share another story that was impactful for you? Have you always been uh, accountable? But maybe oh, yes. I'm perfect. <laughs> Just wanted okay. to clarify that. End of show. My wife is End listening. Of show. End of show. We're going <laughs> to shift now to responsible. Kid. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. So, yes, I understand that, uh, you know, you're, you're being funny. 
but is there a moment when did it shift for you because for me it shifted when i went on a retreat uh, mm -hmm. and yesterday we um i introduced tina crumpacker to everybody and she was the one that was in my face telling me that I was uncoachable. <laughs> and, was, right. and I thought I was responsible. And yeah. it turns out that I was delusional. And so oh, really? how did, because I think that everybody else, everybody has a different illusion of who we think we are. Mm -hmm. So with mm -hmm. you, who have become a great teacher on personal responsibility, what was that moment for you? I would say, Lillian, and it's a great question, there's a series of moments that tend to shape us yes. uh, over time. I mean, I could spend the whole hour talking about my past as anybody could. Uh, but, you know, one day in 1975, eight days before I turned 17 on a Tuesday afternoon, my mom at age 51 died of a brain aneurysm. Mm. I had said goodbye to her that morning. I'd got driven to school in Ithaca, New York, where Karen and I grew up. And... Uh, at 5 p.m., my father came by the gas station where I worked to inform me she was gone. Certainly, that was a life-defining moment. Absolutely. And it's been, you know, 44 years or whatever. And, of course, time really does heal almost all pain. But on that day, um, I had to, of course, after we grieved, make a choice. I could certainly wallow in victim thinking over the fact that I'd lost my mother so young, or I could move forward. Now, it wasn't conscious, Lillian. At 17, I didn't think, I need to be accountable. Yeah. But obviously, that, that time in my life was a, a moment that shaped me for in many ways, I'm sure. Yes. Uh, and then, you know, my father was Cornell wrestling coach, and I wrestled. And if there's ever a sport where character matters, it's wrestling because and accountability because when you're on the mat and you lose, you can't blame your team. You can't blame your, your, your colleagues. There's no blame in the coach. When you're out there for six minutes and you, you blow it, the only thing you can say is, what could I have done differently? Now, I've, I've never played a team sport. I'm not tall enough to play basketball. I'm not big enough to play football. I always wrestled because that's what my dad did. That's what my brothers did. So there's a lot of accountability in the wrestling world. And then Karen and I got married when she was 19 and I was 22. And obviously that meant it was time to make good choices about being a good husband. And it's taken me years to get wherever I am today. That's right. And uh, we are very incompatible, to be honest. We're very <laughs> different. She's all about feelings. I'm all about logic. <laughs> and we've had many battles. So as we've gone through life, I'm now 60, the big 6-0. Uh, it's just a series of moments that came to me in my life that helped me say, you know what? No blame, no whining, no victim thinking, no depend. Now, I almost said no depending on others. No, we certainly have people in our life that help us reach our goals. But when I was out selling training in Minneapolis, St. Paul from 86 to 95, I was the only one responsible for making those sales calls, getting those appointments, getting up early and working all day long. And here's what I saw. People who failed in that training company, well, why don't we have better advertising? When am I going to get more coaching? There was a lot of externaling, externalizing and blame. But I continued to succeed because you know what? If it was, if it was to be, it was up to me. Nothing Absolutely. new about that. Absolutely. And today it's up to you. Do you want a copy of this book? It's called QBQ and Raising Accountable Kids, Flipping the Switch, 407-373-5959. You can call or leave a message. And at Facebook Live, we can go to at Lillian's Radio Show and you can send me a private message. Tell me which book you want because we are giving them all away today. So be the fifth caller and we'll get you started there. And we're going to continue our conversation when we return worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. We'll be right here waiting for you. I almost didn't make that one, John. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're, a pro you're a professional. I know uh, you would never blame the guest. Oh, no. Would never do that. Okay. So you got the cue. So you got the cue. Here we go. <laughs> it's like, okay. It's like my deck of cards. I feel like I have a deck of cards here. Well, so, then I, next time I want you to you know, be done, I'll just do, do this. Okay. Okay. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll help each other out because that's right. what... That's what accountable Teamwork. people do. Accountable people raise you up to that next level because mm -hmm. we want to be surrounded. As a matter of fact, it's right back there. 
and it says your vibe attracts your tribe. Your vibe attracts your tribe. Mm -hmm. And it was given to me by a listener and someone who I've become friends with. And so your vibe attracts your tribe. And so like-minded people that are responsible bring like-minded people. So I want to ask, oh, Jeremy, let me see what, because I can't read and talk at the same time. That's all right. I recently promoted. And I attributed a lot of my success to John and QBQ. Isn't that nice? Uh, um, so this is Jeremy Smith who's saying this. What can I do for me? What, uh, what can I do to be best, most successful? This is really tiny, so I'm having a difficult time here reading it. <laughs> it's a life-changing thoughts and super simple way to make amazing changes. Thank you, Jeremy. That's really nice. I'm sorry I, I butchered your beautiful words um, because they are true. Most people don't understand this. And this was a huge shift for me, John. For those of you who are watching, you still have an opportunity on Facebook Live to get some of these books. So send me a message at Lillian's Radio Show. Send it to me privately. That way, um, you are able to get a chance to win some of these books. So, or tell me where you're from and tell me if you've ever heard of personal accountability. So, John, um, when, when we went on the first break, I had said you had said an acronym. And FEAR is an acronym, an acronym for me that says uh, uh, focus, uh, FEAR is uh, focus everything. No, 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 no. I got, I got two different FEAR acronyms. And follow How about every, this? Focus everything follow, around results. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but follow every avenue require. Oh, good. Fear good. is follow every avenue require. Yeah. And fear thinking is lack thinking. And we always know when we're in this mode when we feel anxiety. So um, when we are um, lack minded, another acronym is lamenting, anxiety, complaining, and then you ultimately become a killjoy. So mm. that is lack it's thinking. Yep. So with that in mind, um, what are some of the quick tips that you can give while we're off the air uh, to someone who wants to make this shift? What's the first thing that they can ask? The key mm -hmm. question. Sure. Real quick. All right. What can I do to be more accountable today? Okay. And then? How can I take responsibility for all results in my life? Uh, my daughter, Kristen, from the stage, when she speaks, tells a great story, and it closes with this line, it's my mess. If my department's not humming along like I want, it's my mess. If my relationships aren't like I want, it's my mess. If my results are not there, it's my mess. That's the message. But then the QBQ material, the book, shows us how to do it. It's very shaming just to say, be accountable. But when we can learn how to eliminate these three traps, victim thinking, procrastination, and blame, that's exciting. You know, Zig Ziglar used to say, fear is false evidence appearing real. And he yes. came way before Lillian and John Miller. Absolutely. So fear is real. It's, I mean, in our, in our minds, it's there. But the minute I start taking accountability and ownership for my life, some of that fear will dissipate because I'll realize, you know what? I'm in charge of me. Yes, yes. And so with that in mind, uh, letting you know that when we come back from the break, which we're about to do, I'll talk about my show, how to get a hold of me and the different ways uh, to promote my sponsors as well. Keep Me Safe Organics and uh, First Alternative Care, which is uh, $35 a month per household for um, telemedicine. And that is just amazing. That includes family practice and dermatology and three hours of mental health counseling. So go to whenyouneedafriend.com. I just want to, these are my off the air sponsors and Liberty Health shares my on and off the Great. air sponsors. So we're going to um, talk about them too. And now I want to shift to children too. Welcome back to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, where we're heard worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. I'm your host, Lillian McDermott, and it is my goal that we learn from one another. Today, everybody that you meet, look at them as a teacher. People teach you what to do and what not to do. We're in choice. We're always in choice. And everything that we're talking about today is about choice. You can choose fear or you can choose love. And those are the ultimate choices that we can make for ourselves today and every day. And so today we're talking about, we're, we're about to go into raising accountable kids, but before we go into that raising accountable kid mode, we've gotta be accountable people, right? Mm -hmm. So in taking accountability, it is important that 
you help me out as well, that we help each other out. We're like-minded people helping each other out. That means including the show, which is a free classroom, free life coaching, whatever you want to call it. But it's my classroom. And this is where I learn new truths that that were are different than when I was a child that no longer support me today. And so now we are adults and we as adults, we get to learn this new language, which is 100% accountability, responsibility, and making a difference in your own life. Because ultimately, you're the one that can do that. So go to whenyouneedafriend.com. Please become a subscriber. When you do that, you get the show, the audio of the show sent to you, to your smartphones, tablets, wherever you sign up to go. And um, also, you get my 90-day challenge to self-love ebook. Along with that, um, you can um, go to the social medias and like me and follow me there, help to grow this message. And so while you're there, there's also my YouTube channel. Click on that. Also subscribe. And when you subscribe to my YouTube channel, that gets sent down to you too. But if you don't like social media and you don't like YouTube, you can follow me on all different podcasts. So there's so many different ways to be connected. But here's the thing. Without my sponsors, there would be no show. So please go to my homepage at whenyouneedafriend.com. Click on my sponsors. Liberty HealthShare is my sponsor on and off the air. They are making a huge difference in how we take our health back. And so figure out different ways that we can support our sponsors the way they're supporting the show. And lastly, when you listen to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, boom, you get lots of free gifts. You get gifts of like today, we're giving away raising accountable kids. And this is so crucial because the more diluted we are in victimization, the more life, the more difficult life will be. And then there's flipping the switch. There's QBQ. There's the outstanding, the QBQ workbook, which John holds up every time I say that. And, um, and so be a caller today and tell me which book you want. That's how simple it is. You got that message, John. That's how simple it is. And you can listen to us at Lillian's Radio Show Live. You can watch the video of the show as we're doing the show. So I want to encourage you to take 100% responsibility here and change and flip the switch. It's just as simple as a shift. You can shift that quickly and go call 407-373-5959. That's a call and I don't answer. Uh, so just leave a message or you can text me 407-373-5959. If you are watching on Facebook Live at Lillian's Radio Show, then you can send me a private message and you too will be a part of this whole uh, personal 100% accountability. Now, while we were on the break, we talked about different acronyms that we can use to kind of like reframe words. Mm -hmm. And I said so many times, and I said to you, John, you know, in order for us to be responsible, and you've, I know you believe this as well, as, as responsible parents uh, or people, we need to be, if, if we want to be responsible parents, we need to be responsible people. And so with that in mind, how many parents do you know that are doing an outstanding job, but then they're, we've overdone it to raise entitled children. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how can we create balance? Because our strengths can become our weaknesses as well. Mm -hmm. So how do we keep balance with, when it comes to raising accountable kids? What's your principle and philosophy? Uh, well, bottom line, we need to buy into this simple truth. When it comes to my children, and my wife and I have seven. Uh, they are not, it's not about uh, Hollywood. Yeah. I, I will not blame Donald Trump or Obama before him. Uh, it's not about the church or the youth leaders. Uh, it's not the teachers or the coaches. The, the major premise on which the Raising Accountable Kids book rests, and there's several key theories or themes in the book, principles. The major one is this, and it's on page two, it says, it says, my, my child is a product of my parenting. And that statement ends with a period. But that's painful. That is painful, yeah. especially when you've taught your child. And I'm being the devil's advocate here, okay? I'm just being the devil's advocate. Especially when you've done a wonderful job as a parent mm -hmm. and your children make choices that are not of accountable. Do. Of or they do. you're a crappy parent and all of a sudden these kids are learning 
how to make great decisions for themselves without ownership of the parent. So how do you explain well, that phenomenon? That's when they succeed in spite of the parent. That's right. And that happens. If I, let me put it in the corporate world. I'm working somewhere, I'm trying to get things done. It's not going the way I want. I can make a choice in that moment. That's what QBQ is all about. The question man, the question is making choices in the moment. I can spend my time at the water cooler complaining about management or other people or what they haven't done for me lately. Or I can go back to my desk, my workspace and say, what can I do to move forward? Well, with parenting, of course, it, kids make their own choice, especially once they reach that age that we define as an adult, though that that age has been extended over the past couple of decades. Now, <laughs> 35. <you> know, yeah, <laughs> right. But if I blame the world for the choices my child makes, if I blame Hollywood or the culture today or, or Congress or, or my pastor or my priest or my rabbi, whatever, or if I blame my kid's friends, which is a key thing many weak parents do, weak, mm -hmm. W-E-A-K, then how am I going to learn, grow, and change? The only way I'm going to become a better mom or dad, and by the way, as we say in the Raising Accountable Kids book, parenting never ends, it just changes. It never ends, it just changes. We go from building children to relating to our children, yeah. and we have kids who are 20 years old up to 36. So we're now basically relating to them. But in the end, I must say, it's not the world's fault. It's what can I do to be a better mom or a dad today? Because people say, well, John, it's kind of black or white that the kid, the child is a product of the parenting. Well, what's the other option? Pointing fingers, <laughs> whining, lamenting the world's culture and how it's going downhill, mm -hmm. blaming someone else. I mean, if those are the other options, I personally don't want to go there because what I have found in my own life when I'm wallowing in victim thinking or I'm pointing fingers or I'm procrastinating, I'm just not the best me that I can be. But I can take charge of those thoughts and, and my actions by saying, QBQ, what can I do today to be my best? How can I learn new parenting skills? So the accountability book around parenting is really based on mom, dad, Stop blaming the world, mm -hmm. become the best parent you can be. Very good. Now you talk about absolutes on the book because mm -hmm. when your child is little and they're young, that's a great time to form a child. It's a great, you know, a great way. It says it in Proverbs, you know, it's, it's important for us to pass on these um, tools to our children. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. let's talk about these absolutes that you talk about. And is there any time that you change an absolute? Oh, that's a good question that I probably have to process just for a bit. But the absolute message, <laughs> the absolutes message mm -hmm. is strong parents have strong values. They have clear values and they, they disseminate, they teach those values to their children. But the obvious example would be if you have a three-year-old, are you going to allow him to hit his sister once, twice, 10 times? or zero times. Well, most parents still agree with us. No, hitting other people is never allowed. So that's an example of an absolute. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the examples in the book is within working with teenagers. Uh, the Brady family, excuse me, the Burleson family in the book, Brady and Terry Burleson, had, had a teenage daughter who wanted to go to a certain movie, but they took responsibility for that moment. They checked the movie out decided it was not in line with their values, and they told their 15-year-old, nope, you can't go to that movie. Sorry. Now, obviously, when that daughter is 18 or 21 or 40, she can choose any movie she wants. But as parents, strong parents, we need to teach our values, but we have to be clear on what they are. That's what the absolutes are all about. Very good. And so as the children grow, those absolutes also change as well, right? Well, like we have a 20 year old and she goes to school and she works, but we've told her uh, prior to your job, what right now is a, a, an absolute in your life is college. You know, getting those classes behind you, getting those grades and graduating. Now, I, I, I believe that or organizations should hire more character than college degrees. Sure. But right now she's working on a business, a two year business degree. So it, we, we would, we've told her, if you can't balance working at AMC theaters, which she does, and going to college, and we understand the struggle, 
we will allow you to drop the, co- the work and focus on college. That's her absolute now, but yeah. that will change once she yeah. graduates. Absolutely. And so right now we can take ownership of our life. We have some books here to give away, Raising Accountable Kids, QBQ. We have Flipping the Switch, which I just flipped. And we have the QBQ workbook and Outstanding. Call 407-373-5959 or text us 407-373-5959 or at Lillian's Radio Show. You can join the conversation off the air as well. And we're going to continue our conversation with John G. Miller when we return worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. We'll be right here waiting for you. Whew, I can take a breath now. You know, it is so important, John. And, and for those of you who are listening, because I can't, um, while I'm doing the show, I'm not looking down. Great to see you this morning, John. So Chris is saying great to see you hi chris hey chris thank you so much for watching today and for listening to uh and watching the lillian mcdermott radio show at lillian's radio show uh at lillian's radio show is the um the facebook okay so with this in mind there's a conversation everybody wants to blame that is so disempowering mm-hmm. the secret here is when we do take ownership everything changes Mm-hmm. because we change. Yep. Well, our so, feelings change. I'm very much a cognitive guy. Uh, I'm a Cornell grad, a bachelor's degree in agricultural ed- um, economics, business degree, four-year degree. That's all I've got. But I have learned through selling training, through facilitating training, through bar- being married for 39 years, for, for managing or building seven children, uh, through just life, that our thoughts come first, our feelings come second, our actions come third. Absolutely. Right. So that's the cognitive world. And so if I think differently, I will feel differently. So case in point, just yesterday on Facebook and at QBQ.com, we posted a new blog about not viewing everything that happens to you as I'm a victim. If the world or something goes against me and my first thought is, well, I'm a victim, that's not fair then not only am I encouraging those around me to, to, be, to play the victim, mm-hmm. I'm going to have negative feelings, anger, frustration, bitterness, envy. Those are bad things. Yeah. So if I think differently, like, well, hey, uh, not everything's fair, but what can I do to move forward today? I've just changed my thoughts, which gives me a feeling of positivity, if you will, to use a buzzword of excitement, yes. because now I'm back in charge of me and I can proceed to take good positive action. Absolutely. And so, you know, we have 70,000 thoughts a day. You know, um, I had Bruce, um, oh, his name, Bruce Lipton on the show. And he was such a great teacher. His message and his research completely changed my way of thinking. Mm-hmm. Because we think that if we're you know, and, and when people think, okay, I'm going to be logical and I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be a realist and I'm going to think of everything bad that could happen. But what mm-hmm. happens if things go well? So mm-hmm. when you have that mindset, you see these very successful people and you ask them, what were you thinking? And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they were saying there was no option but to succeed. Yeah. And even their failures were ways sure. to create something better and new. And so out of these 70,000 thoughts, um, you have 90% of the thoughts are reoccurring and Mm -hmm. 80% are negative. So just Mm -hmm. making that shift alone from that 80%, maybe even increasing a little bit, little bit at a time, then we are able to go from that feeling, the thought, the feeling, and the action. That is absolutely wonderful. That when we go with children, how do we empower them because sometimes our strengths can become our weaknesses and i'll Mm -hmm. tell you more about that all right when because we're about to go live this is our last segment john are you glad you woke up early today absolutely i couldn't wait (laughs) i'm glad and the sun is almost up here in colorado now welcome back Welcome back to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, where we always learn and grow together. I am so excited that we have John G. Miller. For those of you who want a copy of his book, you can call or text 407-373-5959. Remember, when you call, I don't, I don't answer the phone, but leave a message. I'll get to you. And that's uh, the books are QBQ. We're giving away Raising Accountable Kids flipping the switch. We have the QBQ workbook on John's end over there. And those are, by the way, are both mine that he's holding up. And then the other one is um, the outstanding book. 
And so these are all different ways you can change your life. And it's by taking 100% ownership. And by the way, you can also go to my 100% ownership responsibility page that you can answer four little questions. And those four little questions will take you from victim to responsible. And so just anything, you know, this is, this is the thing, John, we don't want. Responsibility isn't sexy. Accountability isn't sexy, but living the life of your dreams. I give a talk on living the life of your dreams because Good. it was giving a talk on being 100% responsible. Who wants to listen to that? It's not my fault. It's mm -hmm. everybody else's fault that I am the way I am. And so, but when we make that shift, which was huge for me, mm. um, when we make that shift, it's amazing the things that we can accomplish. So when it comes to being a parent, because I have very strong values, I have very strong um, views. And because of that, I have an ability to predict things that might happen. I, I go through this series of thoughts and I kind of have like everything like from A to Z plan, you know, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And usually life is lived in Z, not just necessarily A. We have to be able to adapt and shift. But with that, I was able to solve a lot of problems that I foresaw that my children could go through and did a lot of things that I should have allowed them to experience. Mm -hmm. And when I say should, I mean, um, I looking back, everybody's on a journey. So looking back, how can we warn parents that we're making it too easy for our children to live this perfection that well, we want in life for them. Sure. There's a lot of messages out there today. We see it. Parents get, I'm going to try to put it this way, quality parents, let's say, get frustrated when they see other people's children being entitled. Uh, we probably all at times can raise an entitled child because we're gonna make mistakes by enabling them that day or covering for them. But in the bigger picture, you're gonna find the strong parents, the accountable parents recognize that inherent in the growth process is failure. Mm -hmm. My mentor said that all the time. Inherent in the growth process is failure. We must allow our kids to fail. We must allow them to suffer consequences and that whole that suffer word, that's hard for parents. We, we love them so much. We want to step in and rescue them. Yes. But now you're, now you're seeing, I mean, just my, our 20 year old at AMC theater, she's a supervisor already. And she is amazed at the 15 year olds, the 16 year olds that come to work. And after two days say, eh, this is too hard. I quit. <laughs> I want a promotion. <laughs> yeah. Or I want a promotion. It's like, I mean, we wonder who's raising these children that don't recognize any value in working or earning their own money. They, they just want to quit and go back home. And I don't know what they do, but somebody's raising them. But I have to say, look in the mirror and then say, okay, we've made some mistakes. What can I do to be the best father today? So I'm parenting kids 36 down to 20. And of course, Karen is too. And our kids make choices. They make decisions. We, our rule is we offer input and advice once. And if they don't take it, we're done. Well, that's what we've tried to stick with. It's not easy. But if we offer a grown <laughs> child, yeah, if, and there, some of them are listening, but we offer them advice once and they reject it. Yes. Okay. We've done, we've done our, what we believe you're, is our parenting John, job. You're giving information. You're giving information so that people can make informed choice. You're being an uh, invitation to a different truth. There you go. And a different path. And if sometimes I'm wrong. Sometimes Karen's wrong and our kids make their own choices and things turn out great. So yes. we have to let go, but that's how parenting changes. It goes from building the kids to relating to the kids. And my wife and I are now at 60 and <clears throat> 50 something. Uh, we, um, we are relating. We are relating to our children and that's still a parent's job. So we can still ask, what can I do to be, be good at relating to my kids? Okay. So that's, Unbelievable. As parents, we're raising our children. We want them to be achievement oriented. We want them to be action oriented. But first it's a thought, then it's the feeling, then it's the action. And we talked about that off the air. And so where are we as parents, where we, we teach them how to achieve and how to be successful, where do we help our children with an emotional IQ? 
with a way of being kind and generous and loving. What is your advice for parents that are seeing the children hit? And we want to be positive sure. in training instead of shameful. What are your tips for that? Well, we're not afraid to confront a young child. Uh, there's a movement today where parents, we think, use way too many words with their small children. Not everything has to be explained. I'm sorry. Not everything is about the child's feelings. <laughs> Sometimes we can say, stop it now. And I have a daughter who says, oh, dad, that's so harsh. Well, honey, that's how you were raised. Stop. And there's a movement out there about, well, you know, let me explain all this to my four-year-old and get his feelings on the table. And no, just sometimes you have to be the boss. In the parenting book, we talk about is the child in charge of the home or is the parent in charge? We see a lot today where the child is in charge. Their emotions, their actions are whipping the household left and right. And yet then parents one day realize, you know, I can step up and ask, what can I do to be a better parent, take control of my home? That's not being shameful or mean or cruel. That's doing a parent's job. And a lot yeah. of parents have abdicated their leadership role today by allowing the nine-year-old and her or his mood to run the household. We think that can be changed, but it takes a commitment to strong, accountable parenting. I, I, I agree. I, I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful that, that we as parents, I think a child that doesn't have a strong role model, and when I say strong, I don't mean empowering, abusive, uh, no. spanking, or, or demeaning a child. I'm not talking about that. But if a child knows that they are safe, with mm -hmm. their parent and that their parent at the beginning, because once that'll all shift, this, th what I'm talking about now is all going to change once they get a voice and say, no, you know, when they, when they start sure. making their own decisions, but it's always nice to offer children choices, choices that they can start learning. Like, do you want this beautiful outfit or this beautiful outfit? Let them choose right. whatever it is. And we're talking about young, but every phase of childhood requires a different kind of strong parenting. That's right. What could you say about that? As well, that's actually, uh, Lillian, that's a good point. That's the challenge in covering parenting in, a, in an interview because parenting a three-year-old is way different than parenting a 13-year-old. Parenting a 13 year old. Yes which is way different than parenting a 23 year old. So we'd almost have to have, to have specific examples. Yes. But bottom line, in our message, we say modeling is the most powerful of all teachers. Amen. So you wanna raise a kind and loving child, hey mom and dad, are you modeling kind and loving? Or are you a blamer, a screamer, a victim yourself? What kind of actions are your children seeing you engage in? So we need to understand that modeling is powerful and I need to own the culture of my household and I need to ask what can I do to be a better parent and I need to lastly recognize my child is a product of my parenting. I will not blame society. Very good. I love that. I love that. And, and again, the books are called the QBQ. Let me see if I got them in order. QBQ. We got Flipping the Switch. We have the QBQ workbook. We have Outstanding. And we have Raising Accountable Kids. And that starts with you. Yes. Being an accountable person. Thank you, John Miller. Uh, John G. Miller. John G. Or, Miller. Yeah, John G. Miller. You can go to QBQ.com to yep. learn more. You can get the books there. You can get the books online. You can get the books uh, today for free. Be the fifth caller and just let me know. Keep just call and just let me know which book you want. That's 407-373-5959. You can also go on to at Lillian's Radio Show at Facebook Live. John, thank you so much. Thank I'm you. I'm so grateful to find a partner that is sharing. We can, we can unite and share the same message together and yep. know that we are creating a difference and, within ourselves mm. and then be that model for thank everybody you. else. Thank you so much for what you're doing. Thanks for having me on, Lillian. And to you, my listening friends and my viewing friends, it is time. It is time to look at the word responsibility in a totally different way. Ownership. And the buck stops with you, with me. And please remember, I'll be right here waiting for you worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. This is Lillian McDermott wishing you love, peace, joy, and unexpected abundance. Make it the best day ever. ever. Good job. I, knew that would be I got it. Oh, I got, you got it. You got it. You got this. Okay, so we have people watching. On, and I'm gonna, you know what? I wish I had my magnifying glass, or maybe I, I need to expand this 
a little bit larger. Let me see if I can, oh yeah, it's no wonder I can't read this. It was really small. Okay, so that, so that you know, we have Justin saying, John, you are awesome. And I totally agree with John, uh, Justin. Thank you, Justin, for watching Thank today you. and being a part of the Facebook Live. I wanna see where you guys are listening from. And then Ed is saying, amen, life-changing actions. Thank you, John. Great interview, Lillian. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thank Ed. You for that now that i can read these i had it like in 45 and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at oh my god i can't even read this so is there anything you'd like to add i know it's early where you live and i really am grateful for you is there anything sure. you would like to add what about grandparenting oh grandparenting uh, my wife and i quit we're tired <laughs> <laughs> we, ha we have 10 grandchildren and tomorrow being a Saturday, we have four of them here for most of the day because the parents are working or busy or traveling, whatever. So my wife right now and I are hunkering down, preparing for a tough day. Just kidding. We love our grandkids. Yeah. That's a whole new subject about when to step in, I, when to I step sense, out. I sense a book coming up. Yeah. There's a chapter <laughs> in there on grandparenting. Yes, yes. And so um, one of the things I wanted to say, I wanted to finish a thought because um, sure. we started... Uh, I was saying that we think about being a realistic as everything that can go wrong, but we need to give that equal opportunity and look at what could go right in our life when we take ownership. And another thing I want to add is the word mistake. Just like responsibility is a negative word, mistake is also uh, one that is shameful. And what I want to encourage people to see is that mistake is a different way of learning what not to do. And so there's a lot of growth opportunity in a mistake that I think it's very, very empowering. Yeah. And the moment we disempower ourselves, that's when we feel that, that blame, shame, that lack thinking, that fearful thinking. Is there anything that if, if John G. Miller, a 60-year-old, could go back to the young parent, 25-year-old mm. John, what advice would you give yourself as John the young father? Oh, probably more. It, it'd, be, it'd be less about parenting and more about the marriage. Okay, say more. Possibly that young John needed to be less opinionated, less controlling, that kind of thing. Uh, work on me looking in the mirror back then. Uh, obviously, at some point, I took full accountability for how I interact with my wife, or 90% accountability at least, mm -hmm. that she would tell you. But, but you know, 30, <laughs> 30 years ago, Lillian, it is true. In our 20s, we're more immature than we know. Yeah. Everything has to be my way. My way or the highway. So if I was to go back to 1983, I would definitely be a kinder, a gentler husband. Wonderful. And you know, growth is people equate it to breathing. You know, it's like, oh, I, I, I have that diploma. I have this achievement. I have that. And all of a sudden, I know it all. And the mm. reality is, it's like breathing. If we le think of growth as an opportunity to breathe, uh, you never breathe once and say, I'm done breathing. Mm -hmm. You right. always are constantly breathing. And I think what makes a successful marriage, here we are, we're going into the Valentine's Day and the love and all this where you acknowledge your spouses and everything. I would say a couple that grows together and mm -hmm. realizes that we don't have the answers stays together and, mm. and um, my husband and I decided that we didn't want to just be married. We wanted to be happily married. Mm, and so there's a lot of shifting that needs to happen. And I mm. love the fact that you're vulnerable, that you would say, hey, listen, I made some, some, sure. some hard line decisions. And so at what, at what point would you say, what is a simple way to shift from I know it all to allowing myself to be curious mm -hmm. instead of critical? I think probably if you look back at John Miller in 1983, there was some fear uh, driven by the need for perfectionism. Mm -hmm. And so that probably all got tangled together for wanting things to be done my way. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all very much jumbled up. Uh, if I was to advise a young husband today, don't be afraid to say, you know what? I blew that. I'm sorry. I was wrong what would you like to do in this approach? How would you like to handle this problem or this moment? Uh, probably more questions, less statements. That would have improved my, my husbanding <laughs> yeah. uh, 30, 35 years ago, sure. And you know what? As parents, 
we need to be able to say that to our children too. Well, that's exactly right. Is, is, and I'm with you, Lillian. As long as we aren't, I, what we've sensed today is there's kind of an extreme going on. And we agree with what you just said a couple of times. Mm -hmm. um, our strengths become our weaknesses when mm -hmm. taken to an extreme. It's great to ask children questions and get their feelings on the table, but at some point, that mom or dad needs to make a decision, yep, that's take right. charge, tell the kid how it's going to be, not when they're 24, but when they're four or they're yeah. 14. We yeah. must find that balance between asking questions and being grace-filled and taking charge and teaching our values. There's a balance in there. And yeah. every pendulum swings too far. And right now we kind of think the parenting pendulum has swung really far on talking to our kids, explaining to them, getting their feelings on the table when sometimes you just got to say, stop. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You know, it's, it's, the, it's, it's one of those things where, um, where do we create that balance? Where do we find that balance? And, you know, as you're, as you're saying, you know, our children need someone to turn to. When, you know, the, the whole saying is, you know, when you need a friend for, for my whole show, so sure. when you need a parent, a child can, needs to feel safe and that they are protected mm -hmm. because all sorts of um, psychological other stuff happens as well. If they, because if they're in charge, it's going to be out of control. And that's, wow, gonna that's set what's the, happening. It's going to set a pattern for, yeah. and it's, and it's, we're diluting we're diluting values and then they're not knowing, like I'm seeing families that haven't had a meal together ever, mm -hmm. ever had a meal mm -hmm. together. And that is so, that was a deal breaker for us. We, ha we always had our children at the table. And so yeah. some of those things, it's wonderful that you can make these exercises and say, okay, what's an absolute, this is, this is, this is great. And I want to acknowledge you and your wife that although um, you acknowledge that you're not a perfect parent, your intention was pure. It's sure, pure. you bet. Thank you. And, and I think that. Thank you. So thank you so much. We, we, I don't know if you have some time. We have Scott that says, my wife, fifth grade school teacher, feels that this year she is seeing the effects of smartphones. Oh, yes, the smartphone <laughs> children. And not only the, the, the currency, the micro, the, the EMFs that they're getting, and so she must be a, a school teacher is what he means. Mm -hmm. um, these devices were put in the hands of children at a very young age to mm -hmm. babysit mm -hmm. them versus parenting. Totally agree with you, Scott. Thank you so much for that. Mm. And children need to learn. Yes, yes, absolutely. And, and Gay is saying John Miller is a fine man. So we'll wow. end with that thought. Thank John, you. you have lots thank of you, people Gay. who love you. And so... <laughs> Uh, thank you to, to, for being on the show. I want you to, I want to thank you for being a listener uh, today and a, a, viewing the show on Facebook Live. I ask that you please like and share uh, with your friends, help us grow yeah. the show so that we can take this message and grow it so that people can learn it sooner as opposed to later. Thank you, John, for being a part of the show. I'm going to stop the, thank you. anything else, any, any last words that you would like to say? Be accountable. QBQ works. QBQ, QBQ.com, when you need yep. a friend.com, and yep. let's all take 100% responsibility together. So I'm going to stop the live stream. We'll see you till our next conversation. And I am going to stop the recording. And for those of you on YouTube, love you guys. Please share, make a comment, because you might not like what we had to say today, but that's okay. You have a right to your own opinion. And so I am going to stop the recording.